Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the hit show, a story written by a current prisoner. This is a prison show where we interview inmates, get their life stories, to how they grew up, to how they caught their case, to how they changed and turned their life around. If listening to prison interviews is something that you're interested in, something that you like and enjoy listening to, then I strongly encourage you to hit that subscribe button. For those of you that have been riding with me for a long time already, I thank you for your support and thank you for stopping by just one more time. You know, these stories, man, they're very, very real, man. And particularly this story, man, is one of the most saddest stories I've ever came across, man. Unfortunately, man, a young boy lost his life, man. And uh, you're going to see, man, the reality of this game being and just how easily this can happen to each and every single one of you, man. Sometimes just being in the wrong place at the wrong time or sometimes just going on a ride with the wrong person, man. You just might never know, man. So think twice before you pick up that gun and think twice before you ruin your life and you ruin everybody else's life around you, man. Because it's not just you doing time, man. It's your mom doing time, too. You know, everybody around you starts to suffer, man. So before you throw your life away, man, man, just please think twice. This is the hit show of stories written by a current prisoner. We're going to go ahead and dive into this prison interview. Thank you for stopping by. Please hit the like on your way out. First and foremost, before anything, before we dive into this part, too, for those of you out there that are listening, man, you know, this is the real deal, man. This is nothing is fake about this show. Nothing is fake about these stories, man. This is real life, and it could easily happen to each and every single one of you, man. So please take heed, man, and please pay attention to this man's story, man. Because it's a very unfortunate thing that happened, man, and it can happen to any one of you guys, man. Edmundo, man, you yourself, man, know your story better than anybody else, man. I'm going to go ahead and, and let you continue, man, exactly where you left off, my friend. Yes, sir. So, uh, where was it that I left off, man? You know... We always get into the zone and yeah. this, you know, it brings back memories, you know, it gets me off my off my toes sometimes, but <laughs> where was it that we left off at, man? Absolutely, man. Um one of the last things that had that we had spoke about, man, it was about um about your cousin, how you said that he had wore a wire on you and he kind of pretty much brought back an old case that was somewhat um quote unquote like forgotten about. They still hadn't charged you for it, man. Do, would you mind elaborating on that case, man? Man, bro, that, that case, my boy, uh, is a really heavy case, man. I still carry that guilt with me forever, you know, and, it, you know, every time I get called, you know, I, I still feel that spirit. But it was, uh, it, it was when I was involved in a drive-by shooting. Uh, I was a driver, you know, and I passed by this park uh, called Laurel Park in Salinas, a uh, pocket, uh, pocket park. And we passed by, uh, seen rival gang members. And at the time, we weren't really trying to kill them, but it was more of a, let's, let's, you know, incite some fear into them. So even just something so little like that, man, it, it was very life changing. And I always think back, like, I really wish I never had to just turn my car around, man. Cause if I, if I never would have done that, bro, I was, I would still be here and a stupid, a stupid little decision. We drove right by. A passenger shot in the air, shot twice in the air, and he ended up shoot, um, mistakenly shooting one straight. One went straight into a wall, to a door, another wall. He struck Ozzy Hell on the head. He's just a little boy in his Spider Man pajamas, man. I read. I remember the, reading the police report, and he went to the kitchen to throw away a popsicle stick, and that straight bullet man hit him, and he died in his mom's arms. When I found out about that man, uh, at the time, uh, I felt really bad, but most, but. I was really thinking about myself and I had to leave, I had to leave town. Long story short, I end up, uh, the case ends up going cold and uh, goes farther and farther away, man. Uh, I, get, I get caught up for the for the murder with Efren and my cousin, he wore a wire on me and that one surfaces. How, how did you, know you that find day? out, Edmundo? How did I find out? Yeah, how, how did you how find we out? You, you, you drove, you, I'm sure you know the incident happened. You drove away, but.
but at that specific moment in time you didn't know right you didn't know that 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 he had actually struck and hit someone correct i had no idea man uh, that night me and a, a couple friends of mine we went out and we're doing dumb stuff uh getting money in, in a way that we shouldn't have gotten but that, that's besides the fact so i'm looking on my on my cell phone it was a um it was a flip phone at the time it was a a verizon envy flip phone you know the buttons on it yeah very very old school now uh, now it is and i look on the internet and you know i i was looking at the crime rate in salinas what's been going on and if anything ha uh, had come up and what i seen i, I read a homicide salinas uh, police are investigating a homicide so i look it up and i was like man someone someone died that day wow well earlier that day and when i when i seen that man i, I was uh, somewhat hysterical in the car and i started crying and you know my homies were telling me hey, what the fuck? Well, why are you crying bro like what the fuck? everybody did, like my two my two buddies were like what the fuck's wrong with you and i was like i gotta go man I gotta go. And I couldn't tell him what happened because uh, something very serious, it could actually uh, lead to my game career, which meant everything to me around that time. So uh, that's what happened that night, man. That's how I found out, it was through my phone, the Where, news. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? I ended up going with a friend out in uh, San Luis Obispo, I told him what had happened, what had transpired. So he agreed to let me, you know, just lay low at his house for a bit. I lay low and everything seemed all right. But Salinas was was too, uh, it's too hot, man. I couldn't go back home. So after that, uh, you know, I was bouncing around from family to family for a while, for a few months. And I came back came back to Salinas and the heat had died down. And when the heat had died down, that's uh, that's when I knew I was okay, I was safe. Did other gang members Did other um, know what had no. taken place? Or was it kind of just like forgotten about swept underneath the rug, nobody knew? Well, that, that death, the death of Azahel, that shook the community. Everybody knew about it. like. Cause that usually that doesn't that's not supposed to happen things like that don't happen and everybody knew like where it came from everybody knew it was from my neighborhood but um people kind of uh, drifted away from it you know in the gang life you know it's, it's like the life is lost you know there's no nothing they could do whoever did it is you know it's, it's no longer a part of us but since i wasn't the shooter uh, my gang gave me a pass. They say, you know, you're good, bro. You're good. So I took it and ran with it and continued living my, my destructive lifestyle. What happened, happened to, to that one that actually shot the gun? Was he green lighted? He was. We ended up, uh, after my cousin wore the wire on me, he ends up coming back. Uh, he gets indicted. They bring him back from, uh, they extradite him from, uh, from Mexico. And, uh, he ends up coming. Yeah. He, I mean, he got, he got put as no good. You know, they put a green light on him. So he automatically went S and Y. Was there any type of, uh, tension or any type of problems, uh, from the higher ups, you know, did the higher ups kind of reach down and say, Hey, you know what? You guys need to take care of this. You guys need to clean the stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, hell yeah, man. Um, I remember when I seen my co-defendant. Uh, I, I talked to him and he told me that when he went, because he went active for a little bit, and he told me that everybody was acting funny and there's people in the pod, you know, playing that, uh, you know, because that's how they do it over there. They play like they're cool with you and then they go and literally stab you in the back or slice you from the back. So he he told me that he felt that vibe and he just couldn't be there anymore. He felt it. You'll know when you, some most majority of the time you'll know when it's gonna happen and people just walk walk away from you. 
so, so going back, man, you're in county, you're, you're fighting one homicide. Take me there to that day, man, that you actually got called up. How did you find out? Was it some type of paperwork someone gave you? Did you get called up to the office to talk to a counselor? How did the, how did you find about that, man, they finally caught you on this other case? Well, the story goes right up. I remember my cousin, he had just came came back from court because he said that he was going to go to uh, go to trial the next the following week. And it was on a Friday. And when he when he came into the cell, he was telling me um, that he's going to court, going to trial, but he doesn't care. You know, he, he had a really good poker face with me. And man, he uh, he told me that there was somebody up front in the front of the um, in front of the jail at, at booking and that this dude was a uh, he just got indicted for a murder and he played on that and told me that he's talking about this one so he kind of baited me in and I opened up about what had happened because I got really paranoid and he sealed my fate from there two days later it's Monday oh, so Monday he morning baited you he knew what he was doing. He asked those specific questions to to ease you up. He can't. Oh man, that, that's a that's a very tactical, yeah. manipulative move right there, man. It was man, and it, it's, it's, it, it don't really eat at me anymore. But at the time, man, like I couldn't believe he did that because he was my cousin. He, that's my my father's sister's son. I really, I, I thought really highly of him. You know, he was like a. He was someone that, that I felt like I respected because of how violent he was, how angry he was, like how, how quick to assert himself he was. So he was someone that uh, I, I, I emulated as well, too. So I ended up finding out right on Monday when he said he was going to go to go to trial, but he ends up going to, uh, to another protective custody. And uh my lawyer came to visit me that day. And right when I walk into that room, he just tells me, it's bad. It's bad, man. I'm, I'm trying to, what are you talking about? Because you know your cousin? He just, wore state, he just went state evidence against me. And then he played a recording, because he's also my other cousin's um, co-defendant too. My other cousin, he's still active. And he and he's telling on him, so he's telling on three the whole time. So I mean, he did what he did, and he sealed my fate, man. There's no way I was gonna come home. I remember uh, going back to Sal. Uh, I fell into a really, really deep depression because I knew I was never coming home. I even, I even contemplating, you know, wrapping the sheet around my neck. But what kept me from doing that was my mom. You know, my mom. I couldn't do that to her. You know, so I kind of just went, went through the ride. Went through the ride, took it. 